There's been no need to feed the fish or drive the porcelain bus. We had a beautiful smooth trip across the Tasman and here we are at Devonport, ready for our adventure. It's only about 6.30 in the morning so the sun isn't really up yet. It's cool but not frigid. Macca's is across the river from the boat so of course we had breakfast there and then headed to Scamander. We've been to Tasmania a number of times before, so this trip we're not heading for all the major attractions and trying to do the whole circuit of the island. We're doing a bit of picking and choosing and staying in the less frequented places rather than the major tourist areas. The weather's fine and the road is dry, so we're going to squeeze out every bit of enjoyment from this road. In Tasmania, every road's a winner. There really only are a couple of boring roads, the one straight down the middle and the one across the top. Every other road really is sensational. And as for traffic, if you're outside the major population areas, there really isn't any. This is an excellent scenic and windy bit of road that heads over St Mary's Pass. It follows along the river on the left and a cliff on the right. But as usual, the GoPro straightens out all the curves in the road. But it seems like no time at all and we've hit the coast and we're heading into Scamander. We've bought all our camping gear. So, for this first night and the second night, we're staying at this caravan park, tenting it. It's very windy, so we need to find a spot that's a bit sheltered. Oh look, someone's already set up our tent. How convenient! Scamander's just a small place with only a couple of shops. The caravan park has nice green grass, but is a bit rustic. We're on the east coast, and this is a lot more temperate than across on the west. Still, it's very windy, but we brave the elements to go and have a look at the beach. It's the next morning. We're staying at Scamander again tonight, but today we're going for a day ride to Ben Lomond, and then to Launceston, and then back again. When you look at the map, a lot of the roads just look fairly ordinary, but this is not the case in 99.99% of the time. Even the roads that look completely straight are nice and windy and go through farmland. But we're doing gravel road today as well, heading to Ben Lomond on a minor sea road. One of the things we realised on this trip is a lot of the sea roads are actually gravel. And this is not at all obvious when you're looking at Google Maps. It just shows that it has a nice main yellow road. While we found all the roads to be in excellent condition, with every gravel road it really depends on the weather and the last time the grader went through as to whether it's beautiful and smooth, corrugated or completely treacherous. The biggest problem with filming while riding in Tasmania is having the, enough discipline to turn the camera off. There is just so much beautiful countryside to film. And of course every time you turn it off, you think you've missed something really vital and important. But I'll shut up for a second because this is a typical example of the countryside that we ride through. Well, here I go again. We're back onto the bitumen and I just can't help myself but feel more beautiful road and green countryside with those white fluffy clouds with the blue background. Just perfect.
Those white fluffy clouds have got a bit of rain in them, as you can see from the camera lens. We've got the odd short shower that we ride through, but it's nothing significant. We're approaching the Ben Lomond turn off now. It's gravel from here right down. It's a good road again, nice and smooth, not too much loose gravel. And so you can be lulled into the feeling that you're the only one on the road. But of course, there's always the odd four wheel drive lurking around the corner. So we still need to be cautious. We're nearly to the famous zigzaggy bit of Jacob's Ladder. I know in a previous video you can see me descend this section of the road, but this one, I'm going up it. And it's raining. But I guess that all adds to the excitement and the adventure. If you're bored with this Jacob's Ladder footage, feel free to fast forward. But for me, it's such a spectacular bit of road that I need to record all the memories. Ben Lomond is 1,570 metres above sea level. We were lucky to visit it today because the next day it was completely snowed in. Yes, in this instance the camera doesn't lie. It really is as steep as it looks. Heading back to Scamander now. Every now and then we find one of these little guys just waddling along the road. Unfortunately, they're quicker than they look and they quickly scamper off into the bushes. Echidnas are such cute little animals. It was such a pleasant ride getting here with that we decided to go back exactly the same way rather than trying to find an alternate route. The weather's been kind. 
Apart from the shower that we got right up on top of Ben Lomond, the weather really has been pretty good today. Apart from the constant wind that we ended up having for our whole trip. We might be just chasing our tyre treads the same way that we came in, but going the opposite direction always makes the road look different and there are different scenes opening up when you're going the other direction. This trip is not just about racing from one tourist destination to another. We're not interested in just getting to the destination as quick as possible, taking some photos and moving on to prove that we'd been there. It's these back roads that we've come to enjoy. And we certainly have not been disappointed. Sure, it can be boring for you to watch, but when we're even older and greyer, these are the memories that we can look back on in video form. Sitting in our rockers drooling out the side of our mouth, we can say, Oh, look dear, did we really do that? As we get older, it seems that memories become more and more important to us. And these little videos really help in that regard. Anyway, we're back to our little campsite for another night. Tomorrow, we move on. Heading to Bridport today, up on the north coast of Tassie. It rained a lot last night. You wouldn't know it, but it took a while for the tent to dry out. Fortunately, the wind helped. There are no tourist destinations today. This ride is all about the road. If you're going to visit Tassie, you really ought to try to include this road from St Helens to Scottsdale. The road really is magic. This road really has everything a motorcyclist could want. Wide open sweeping corners through green lush pasture and then up into the mountains through tight twisty corners. The road climbs up to about 700 metres and then down through twisty, tight corners and then up again. As mainlanders, we're just not used to this sort of road with so many corners that just go on forever. We're used to riding long distances, just for a few kilometres of this sort of road. Tasmanians really are spoiled. Mind you, this could be quite a different story in the middle of winter, with snow and ice on the roads. Hmm, I'm probably a bit too much of a wimp for that. But right now, in the middle of November, the temperature's just about perfect, about 15 to 18 degrees. Back at home, they're sweltering in the high 30s, and there's bushfires everywhere. But it's not just the road that's interesting. There are old buildings along the way to break up the monotony of a perfect road. We're heading down off the mountain now, and you can probably see on the video a tinge of green in between the wheel marks where the moss is growing on the road. So even on a dry day, caution is required. These are not peg scratching roads. If the moss doesn't get you, the gravel in the corners will. So caution is required. We're about halfway to Scottsdale now and heading through Wellborough. The town speed limit allows us to have a bit of a rest and a stretch, stand up on the pegs and prepare for the next set of corners. You can call me easily pleased, 
but I love the anticipation of the crest of a hill. You just never know what the vista is going to open up in front of you. There are lots of cows along here and I keep getting that sweet waft of fresh cow poo that bring fond memories of my childhood growing up on a dairy farm. It's amazing how powerful scent is as a memory stimulant. If it's not the sweet smell of cow poo or silage, it's pine needles or gum leaves that have just been rained on. Even the smell of wet tarmac that's drying out after the rain and the sun is shining on it is really evocative. Riding like this through this sort of scenery really makes me feel as I'm flying through the landscape rather than riding a motorcycle. Derby hosts what is called the Trail of the Dragon. There are any number of mountain bike shops here that will take you up the mountain and let you ride back down again, either hiring out your bike or bring your own. This is a pretty little town, nestles right next to the river. It looks like it's got a free campsite as well and a number of caravans and campers are taking advantage of it. You don't see it in this clip but there are push bikes everywhere. We've made it to Scottsdale and it's time for morning tea. And what better place to stop than a bakery type cafe? Before and after. Very nice. After that nice health food, we force ourselves back on the road to endure this perfect road and beautiful landscape. The road down to Launceston is still interesting with a number of sections of tight, twisty corners. But as before, a number of corners are strewn with gravel, so the speed has to be kept down, which is fine because it gives you a chance to look around. It's windy, but the weather is still holding with a beautiful blue sky above. So we're not complaining, we're really enjoying the ride. And yes, I'm getting repetitive. Reminds me of a YouTuber mate of mine, you know who you are. We try to avoid the major towns, but we have to pass around the edge of Launceston. But it's fairly pretty with all the flowers out, this being springtime. It's not long before we reach Bridport, tonight's destination. It was still blowing a gale when we got here, and it started to rain just as we arrived. So. We've wimped out and we're staying in a hostel. We can't face putting the tent up in this sort of weather. We've got a butte tidy room and they've got a lovely common area for cooking and relaxing that looks out over the inlet. Well, that was a good decision. We got here just in time as the rain started pelting down. But that's okay, we can't expect green, lush countryside and no rain. This is a beaut place to relax. We virtually had the whole place to ourselves. Later in the day the rain eased off, so we're able to get out and do a bit of exploring. As I'm an anti-social old fart, I really enjoyed the fact that the beaches were completely deserted. We had the place to ourselves out here too. Tomorrow we're heading further down the east coast to try a bunner. Just in case you're not completely bored by now, here's some drainage just to end the video.